I'm in Singapore! This is my last episode documenting my wheelchair accessible research in Chinese communities around the world and my last two episodes were in San Francisco and Hong Kong. For my first meal in Singapore, I ate at Fragrance Garden Chicken Rice for their Hainanese chicken rice. And this is in Lao Passat, which is one of many hawker centers in Singapore, and she will be a recurring character. For another meal, I went to Jia Xiang Xiao Chu and I got the Ma La Xiang Guo. Singapore Chinatown is super vibrant and there's all these stores on the side that are both restaurants and souvenir shops. Singapore MRT is super easy to navigate and this is coming from someone who's kind of terrible at navigation and so signage is super clear and it's similar to Hong Kong in that there are whole malls and various stores within the MRT station. I noticed it was also similar to Hong Kong in the way that the MRT station connects to various corporate buildings and so you can have multiple entrances that are actually all connected underground. I was just at one raffles place and it's super close to the Singapore River and there are multiple bridges you can cross. I saw the Merlion which is a huge tourist attraction. I also passed by the Singapore National Gallery and went in because it was free, save for a couple exhibitions. Something that's super surprising to me as an American is free public spaces slash amenities. Every museum is most likely ticketed and it's not very encouraging for people to just wander across and be able to check it out. I went back to Lao Pasa and I tried Nasi Lemak for the first time and this stall has a Michelin star. I went to this giant mall called Funan and again it was really fascinating to see the extent the MRT is connected to various buildings. Above ground, if you exit Funan, it's about two blocks away from the MRT station, but there is a way that you can get to the MRT station underground, which also connects to Raffles City. I also went to the Civilian War Memorial, which was very close to the City Hall MRT station. It was super wheelchair accessible for the most part, a really gentle ramp leading towards the memorial. The only thing is there are stairs if you want to see the center of the memorial. I wandered into this building because there is a really awesome curvy roof and I think this is part of the JW Marriott and it also has an MRT station here. This is um, called Esplanade. So really you can get anywhere, go anywhere and have faith that there's going to be an MRT station to pick you up. I went back to Lao Passat and I got the black fried kui tiao from Lao Fu Zi fried kui tiao. Also adjacent to Lao Passat is Satay Street, but in general, it's a little overpriced for satay, so I would recommend you just go to another hawker stand. I got Masala Dosa at Indian Vegetarian. On another day, I visited the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple and Museum. It's a fairly small temple space that had built-in ramps and a larger worship space inside. It was actually very surprising to me to see the built-in ramp incorporated into the temple architecture because when I was in Hong Kong visiting temples, the available ramps were more modern compared to the rest of the building. There are random pockets of public parks sprinkled throughout Chinatown and it's really pleasant to wander and find yourself in one. So I really love that about Singapore Chinatown. I also love Kaya toast. I got it on two separate occasions, which is why I have two different clips of the toast. On the same day, I stopped by Tian Hock Keng because it's also super close to the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple. And this is another Buddhist temple that had individual booths for different gods. And overall, it was a super beautiful complex. This is more random pockets of green space that you might stumble upon. And they're super well maintained and beautiful. The back of Tian Hock Keng was covered in this lovely artwork. I went to Chinatown Complex the next day because I was craving satay and I ate at 168 CMY Satay because it came up on Google Maps and I look at their front entrance sign and they have the little Michelin man staring back at me and I realized that I accidentally decided to eat at a Michelin starred place. There are over 250 different hawker stands in the Chinatown Complex and so it was just amazing to see the variety offered and yeah, I got also soup wonton dumplings at another place within Chinatown complex. There was also like a home goods store 
within Chinatown complex. I'm not sure if it is actually considered Chinatown complex or just next to it, but it was interesting to see. The next day, I ate at Liao Fan Hawker Chan, which is famous for being the first hawker stand, I think, ever to get a Michelin star. And I got their soy sauce chicken rice. The Qi Xi festival also happened to be going on this past weekend. And so there was a stall set up and I tried a durian ice cream sandwich. On the accessibility front, I feel like I've been most impressed with Singapore out of Singapore, Hong Kong, and San Francisco because the way that humans circulate in spaces feels really natural to also where the elevator is. So here, like if you just walk straight a little further, then you get to the elevator. Whereas in San Francisco and Hong Kong, maybe there was an elevator, but the way to get to the elevator wasn't as intuitive. So yeah, Gardens by the Bay has their own uh, MRT station and this complex is huge and you don't actually need to pay to see the trees and walk around the park, you only need a ticket if you want to see something special. So I ended up getting a 30 Singapore dollar ticket that covers the Super Tree Observatory where you go up one of the trees and have a 360 view of Singapore and the Flower Dome which is the largest glass greenhouse in the world. This was in the Super Tree Observatory where there was also a cafe of sorts and there's two different observation deck levels. So there's this one where you're amongst the branches and there's an even higher one where you can have an unobstructed view. This was inside the flower dome and I really felt those largest glass greenhouse in the world allegations because I was tired walking in here. <laughs> there was such a great variety of plant life in here with cacti and there's a whole exhibit featuring orchids from the east. There was also an exhibit in collaboration with Avatar The Way of Water but I didn't go but I can definitely see the connection. This definitely feels like tropical forest super magical, really colorful. At the Bayfront MRT, this is what I'm talking about again, where the lift placement just seems really intuitive. There were also full body mirrors, which I guess kind of creates this culture where dance groups come to practice. I got the Jang Laksa, which is within the complex of Chinatown Point. On another day, I went to Kohai Bang Mi for their chicken curry and baguette. Also, I lied earlier, I got more kaya toast. <laughs> I visited the Sultan Mosque. It's a really beautiful mosque that is free to visitors. They ask that visitors take off their shoes and if you're not wearing clothing that covers most of your body, they will lend you a robe and or pants. Uh, I have to say the carpet was the softest, plushest surface I have ever walked on. They don't allow videography inside, but you can take photos. They also had a little exhibition space explaining various aspects of Islam, like why some Muslims choose to wear the hijab and what the Quran is, etc. The surrounding area had super vibrant shops. I think I saw a lot of Turkish cuisine and various souvenir stores. I also went to Suntec City, which I believe is a huge mall on the first few floors and an office tower above. Uh, there are two empty R stations connected to this place called Promenade and Esplanade and I love just being in a walkable city. And then this day, I explored a super metropolitan area after exiting the station Dobby Gout. And I know what you're thinking, oh my gosh, Carrie's gonna talk about the metro system again. Yes, I am gonna talk about the metro system again because it's amazing. There are so many metro stations available in the span of a couple blocks and they're really, you know, walkable about 10 minutes from each other. And that's just so great because you can do things a lot more spontaneously. Also, each metro station is connected to a giant mall, guaranteed probably four plus stories. I got Yakun, I got Kaya toast again. <laughs> and this time I also got the eggs because I usually am kind of queasy about gelatinous textures and I confirmed that it wasn't for me, but it was still good. You know, I just know that the texture is not for me. And then I walked by uh, a Don Don Donkey, which I mentioned in my Hong Kong video. I thought it was like 
a chain. I knew it was a chain, but I wasn't aware that it was available in other countries. I don't know why I thought that, but yeah, it was kind of nostalgic, even though Hong Kong was like only about a week ago. And I'm talking more about the metro. I think the signage is really intuitive. And also each station has this locality map where it tells you the you know most pertinent tourist attractions to this site and they also have signage for different exits on the floor right as you come off the escalators which is really helpful because the escalators move pretty quickly i ate at this place called kao haula and i love these little fish also this is just a snack this is not my whole meal on this day i went to people's park center which is right across the street from chinatown point it's a relatively older mall that seems to be mostly frequented by elderly people compared to the malls that I saw yesterday. And there, they had a food court and one of the stalls offered like two vegetables, one meat dish, two, dish, two vegetables, one fish. So I got this for about nine Singapore dollars. And I demolished. This was the entrance to the plaza and when I was researching why I wanted to go to Singapore, one of the reasons was that I had read that you can tap a card to get more time to cross, especially if you're elderly. And I guess that makes sense. It's right outside People's Park Center because it seems to be frequented by more elderly people. So it was great to see that it was true, but it doesn't exist at every crosswalk. So I think it's very regionally specific. There's also this fruit store called Ichiban Fruit. So I got a Thai coconut and a mango. And this is the sweetest coconut and possibly mango I've ever had. And that was my time in Singapore. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below.